Hi there, my name is Ati Gailan and I thought I'd share process breakdown for an, a sketch I did a while ago. It's the theme is Cowboy Bebop as you can see and I want to talk about like how I started the image and my thought process throughout the whole thing until we reach the final stage which is what you currently have in front of you. And I hope by the end of the video you might be able to take away something from this into your own work. So let's just start with the very first step of the process. During the past year I did a lot of sketching in my free time and something I picked up pretty quick is like avoid doing a very detailed sketch in the start you know what what for me what's really important like do I understand what I want to communicate like is there enough marks on the canvas to tell me the information I need to take the image further you know sometimes I have people thinking my images are too rough and not being able to understand anything what's going on you know for you as a viewer this might be way too rough but for me, this is enough information to take the image further to the next step. And that's what's really important for you as an artist, you know, just to provide yourself enough information to move on to the next step. So in this case, the next step for me was to look up a bit of reference. I blocked in a bit of ground and grass, but I wasn't because at the time I had just seen the show. So I wanted to look up the characters, you know, how do they stylize the characters in the show? Because I did, wasn't quite sure how I wanted to draw my characters. But I was looking at how they do it in the show and I was looking a bit at cosplay in reality and I was thinking about like, what do I want to do? Like, you know, I, I'm, I wasn't, I didn't want to copy this and I didn't want to do this. So I was think, I was trying to think about that as I kept moving on to the image. But looking online for reference when you feel like, because at this stage I felt like, you know, I think this composition can work. You know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about it like I think it's pretty interesting the interaction with the characters and I was ready to start painting it but I just wanted to check up a few things before I commit. So finally we can dive into the painting process and this really comes down to how you like to work as an artist but in my case and the way I use my brushes I like to have a base that my, my paint can grab onto because as you can see my brush it's going to leave it's going to make use of what's below it. So in this case, since we have a bit of ore, it's going to pop through. It's not a very opaque brush versus if I would have worked with a very opaque brush, if you look at something like this, it's not going to affect, it's not going to make use of what's below. So this comes down purely to how you like to work as an artist. And in my case, I like to make use of what's uh, underneath my paint. So I started adding some more definition to the details to the car, you know, a bit of blue that's catching from the sky. And I'm always like, whenever I th start a painting like this and I've started to commit to it, I, I think of what, where is my light source? You know, it's coming from down here, hitting the car from below and I commit to it. I don't change the light source halfway through the image because it's just going to, it's just going to put it all into chaos and disaster. And it's not going to be a fun time trying to fix the painting. So I, once I commit to the light, I tend to stick to it. I'll show in the future a few different ways of how you can experiment with your light source without having to commit too early and just to try out a few setups before you feel confident. But in this case, I knew what I wanted, so I just moved on straight away with it. So as we keep going with the image, I start adding more definition. The way I like to work is since I'm not a character artist, I, I, I like to establish the whole surrounding of the image before I do the characters, like basically create a base to make the characters f uh, come into and feel more natural rather than trying to render out the character and then make the environment fit around them. I'm trying to use my what's my main focus, which is environment painting, to my advantage and build a base and make the characters blend into that. Uh, and I th I'm finding it pretty helpful. Uh, lately, I'm trying to get better at character design, so I'm trying to mix it up a bit more. But at the time of this painting, this is how I approach it. And generally, I feel like try to always use what's your strength. You know, if you feel like character is your strong point, then by all means, put heavy focus on that in the start. But in my case, I like environment. So I thought I'd do that. Also, at this point, I introduced some more livelihood in the background. Like, because I was thinking this takes place in a bit of urban area. So I thought introducing a bit of houses, you know, a bit of tree not adding any real detail because this is where our focus is so i try to keep it very simple just suggest a few things that could be going on around the character again the car is going to be the main focus and the characters in the in the foreground um, as i kept doing the image i felt like spike's pose did not really work that well like it it's not really communicating the sense of confidence that i wanted him to have 
Uh, I like this the gesture of Valentine, but Spike wasn't quite working uh, with the pose and what I wanted to communicate. So I adjusted that. I worked a bit on Ein, the Corgi, um, and I felt like this was working much better already. And something I want to show you guys is if we check the values, um, if you look how dark it is here, uh, and then we go back to the earlier steps at the stage where we introduced the darks, it did not change at all. Like we kind of kept, there's a slight darker value here, but we kind of kept what we committed to in the start. Uh, and this worked as a good guiding point. Like this was telling myself like, this is as far, uh, this is as dark as I'd like to go. You know, it's very, I'm not going to go much darker on just on a very few places. And it, it helps me put a landmark. Uh, same as when you draw a character, you know, you place landmark for the pit of the neck, the shoulders, the head. So for me, adding those dark values early on works as a great landmark. And as the image had moved on, I felt like, you know, adding Valentine in this scene, I didn't feel like it was going to add that much. You know, I think it, it's a cool story moment, but I kind of like just the interaction between Spike and Ayn. Uh, and I also tweaked the color palette because this, I'd say like more like contemporary. And I wanted to feel a bit more old school, you know, a bit more retro with like the old car, the classic car and, you know, a bit more desaturated colors. And I felt like this worked much better like this than if I would have kept these colors. So that's the overall conclusion. And I hope you were able to take away something from this and incorporate it into your own work. If you have any questions or anything, drop a comment down below and I try my very best to answer a question in upcoming videos. Again, I'm going to be touching on several topics in my YouTube videos, so be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Just to round out the video, I want to show you guys something I've been working on in my free time for a while. It's called Path of Miranda. It's about a girl and a penguin, and the end product I want to make with this is a motion graphic novel with a tiny bit of animation. It's still an early production. I'm still trying to figure out a few things, but if you're interested in this, you can find more uh, find more out on Patreon on my Patreon, and I'm gonna put a link down below the video. So feel free to check it out, and thank you so much for looking through the whole video. I hope it was helpful. Have a great day. Bye.